Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Trains 2019. Boy, have we got a parade today. So, uh, Trains Forge dumped a lot of new freeware, and this is one of those packs that is. Uh, it's had me giggling now for <laughs> a minute. Oh, I love these. So, uh, this is a large pack of, uh, real, real cars. Uh, the Model 55 Brill Rail Cars, uh, Lord, and it is a pack, it is, it is a pack, <laughs> we got a parade going on, you get a pack, so these things came around, uh, oh, who, the Brill out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, if I read that correctly, uh, four cylinder gasoline engines, with a little stick 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 shift, stick shift transmission manual stick shift transmission uh, in essence these are literal buses put on train tracks in uh, the simplest terms these are quite literally a bus put on train tracks hence the term rail buses uh, the idea of the rail bus became really popular during the great depression in the united states uh, passenger services especially on local services dwindled to next to nothing and railroads were losing a ton of money operating full-size passenger trains on uh, on those local operations and so these guys came into play they're stupid cheap to operate even by today's standards these things are really quite cheap um, but they were stinking cheap to operate, uh, weren't, weren't that hard to build, really cheap to buy for what they were, um, reliable, fairly speedy for, you know, the time period. Obviously these are not, you know, 90 mile an hour modern day transit systems, but yeah, they pick up and go. Uh, easy to operate, easy to use, easy to maintain. Right? It's just all around an easy thing for the railroads to do for inner urbans and local passenger services, stuff like that, where that full-size train was just not profitable. So these things became really, really popular. Now, now I'm not saying this particular model. Uh, I didn't actually find a whole ton of information on the Model 55s. Uh, I'm just talking rail buses in general. That's more or less what these are for. Uh, the Trains Forge model, as I said, is a Model 55 built by Brill, and boy, these things are cool. So you will get, oh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You're going to get 16 cars for various... Uh, operations uh, they all have the same sounds so I'm not gonna go through and run each and every one of them that's why I have them that packed in here I have one model that I'm gonna use to showcase the sounds but there's a blank model to do your reskinning on a CNSW which is uh, this kind of bluish really nice blue with a gray no lettering anywhere on it it's another nice base for those of you that do reskinning and then we got the CA and the L. This is overall just a kind of Pullman greenish. And a Christmas model. That's my Christmas. Yes. It'd be cool for uh, like our, our uh, WKNS here. This would be cool to do for a Christmas scene or something. Like they dressed up a rail bus for Christmas. Uh, a CIER. Now, how many of these are fictional and how many of them are real, I have no honest clue, but this one has some uh, specific details with uh, overhead power wires for operating on uh, trolley systems and such. And of course we got a Great Nor... that ain't the Great Northern. There's a Great Northern model. Aha! I got a Great Northern. Pretty iconic GN scheme. Northern Pacific 328 over there. That's uh, not part of the back. <laughs> the Hartford Eastern. 
which is pretty much the blank model here with a uh, Hartford Eastern Railroad big four in uh, the LVRR which would be here Lagonier, sure. Milwaukee, pretty noticeable Milwaukee scheme, pretty well known. Uh, Northern Pacific here. OC and SE, Oregon, Columbia, and Southeastern. PE. Pacific Electric. Kind of entertaining. The Pacific Electric is the one that gets the, uh, the trolley lines. <laughs> the Silver Pickle. <laughs> I like it. I love this. I freaking love this. Silver Pickle. S L A and H. Which, uh, where is it? Got kind of this Southern Pacific, Union Pacific overland colors. Salt Lake, Albuquerque, and Houston. Boy, now that would be a long run in one of these. From Salt Lake City down to Houston. Keep on boogieing. We got the U, R, R, and N. And lastly, but not leastly, we got the V, T, and T. Now, as far as detail goes, the only one that I think really changes is the uh, the Cam Riot, the Cambria, Cambria Interurban over here. I think this is the only one that really changes as far as detail goes. It got the uh, it's got the electric trolley poles and such. Other than that, all the other models are, I believe, the same. I didn't really see any noticeable differences. So. We're not going to dive into, uh, actually, we'll dive into the electric, just for giggles and squiggles. So, detail-wise, headlights, that's all we get. I am kind of surprised that we don't get to uh, raise or lower the trolley poles. A little bit sad there, but anywho. As far as detail goes, again, like I said, that's really the only thing that changes. We got our wire up here, and then you know, the overline, the overhead power pickups. So let's go back over here to our over-the-road locomotive. We can get rid of this, and we can go into the free roam. So really nicely detailed overall. Uh, the headlight. Not entirely my favorite, but it's not bad either. It's uh, got a nice yellow glow to it. It just kind of... It's kind of a noticeable, just a little dot right here. It doesn't really reflect or anything. Uh, but they do have a nicely detailed undercarriage too. We got our... You can see the bottom half of our engine right here. Our oil pan. Transmission. Uh, drive shaft going down to our gearboxes. I just, oh, this is too cool. Nicely modeled. Even have individual rivets. I freaking love it. I love it when they do this. Little details like that make a difference. Uh, lettering is not the crispiest, uh, which can be an issue with kind of trains as modeling and in general, especially if you use Photoshop to make these skins. But the lettering is very not so crispy. Like our Herald here, we can barely read. But coloring's nice, detailing's nice. They even have a nicely detailed interior. Uh, let's see, right click. It is empty. I don't know if we can pick up passengers or not. It does have a nicely ish detailed interior cab view. It's not, there are some things that are kind of eh, like this, this should be a separate plate, it's just kind of a blurry texture, 
but the modeling itself is really nice overall. Uh, whether or not you can fiddle with all this, a great question. Um, let's see, reverse lever. Forward. Reverse. Okay. Ah, uh, we don't get to shift gears. What do we got here? We don't get to play with that. What do we got here? We don't get to play with that. What's well, this? That's a bell. That's a gas pedal. Uh, that's our independent brake lever. I imagine that's supposed to be the clutch. It is a uh, oh high. They don't look too thrilled. Are there different gauges? Eh. Brake pressure. Yeah, it's kind of nicely detailed interior. <laughs> oh lord. I, it's not a bad sounding horn. There is a noticeable pop there in where the audio file takes, uh, where the loop changes, but other than that, it's not a bad audio file at all. It's just an absolutely entertaining sounding horn. This big old trumpet right here. Uh, we do have a bell right here. Uh, can't see the bell moving or anything. Which looks like it's air powered, so it's got a little. Uh, it just rings a little dinger inside. And of course, our, uh, our running, our driving. Oh, yeah. Rev it up, take away. So this is cool. Our drive shaft here spins, which spins our individual drive shafts going to the uh, going to the wheels themselves. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love the gear shift sound. There is a bit of a noticeable pop uh, where the audio changes, but I love the gear shift sound. That is entertaining. That is cool. Sounds like an old car. Now, I don't know how many gears he would have. I imagine it's just a high and a low. Uh, just going off my knowledge of how a uh, Model T drives. I imagine it's just a high and a low, not like a four or six speed transmission or anything. So, But highly entertaining. I'll go up to 100 here. Boogie and boogie and 45 looks like our top. This is about right for these. The red down sounds are not terrible. They're not stellar. <laughs> oh, I love it. Kind of hear the sound of air brakes. That's what that sounds like. So I don't know. It's not too bad. There's some noticeable pops in the audio files, but other than that, not too bad. Not too bad at all. I absolutely love hearing it. I love hearing that rev up. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. That is entertaining. Oh, that is entertaining. So, if you have, you know, some short lines or some scenic railroads or whatever, these are an absolute must-have. So, these are freeware, available from Trains Forge. 100% free. Ain't got to pay a dime. Just got to download them. Uh, these are well worth checking out. 100% worth checking out. Uh, especially if you're a reskinner. Uh, they do provide you a, a blank a blank sheet of paper to have at it. So, I imagine I will be diving into one and reskinning into some Eagle River colors before too long. But Until then, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I love this thing. I'm going to go play with it some more because this is too stinking entertaining. It's a very odd, it's a very odd thing to see modeled. The rail buses tend to get overlooked a lot, even in the model railroading world. So it is, it's too cool. I'm gonna end up going to play with it some more. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next time.